Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The US and Britain say they are looking into reports that chemical weapons have been used by Russian forces attacking the Ukrainian port city of Mariupol. Ukraine's Azov regiment said three soldiers were injured by a poisonous substance in an attack on Monday. The Pentagon called the potential use of the weapons deeply concerning, while the UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said officials were working to urgently investigate what she called a callous escalation of the war. Meanwhile, the British Armed Forces Minister said all options would be on the table if there was any use of chemical weapons in Ukraine by Russia. Verifying it is uh, clearly very important because if chemical weapons have been used, that is a very important moment for uh, our Prime Minister and other heads of government around the world to consider how we would respond. But as I've said, all options are on the table and President Putin should be clear that the use of chemical weapons is simply not acceptable. Meanwhile, Russia's leader, Vladimir Putin, has said his invasion of Ukraine will achieve what he called its noble aims. Speaking alongside Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko, Mr. Putin claimed that a clash with Ukraine had become inevitable. Mr. Putin said he had been left with no choice but to launch the invasion in a bid to protect the Russian-speaking Donbass region. The UN says 10 million people have fled their homes since the invasion began. At least 25 people have died so far in landslides and floods in the Philippines after tropical storm Megi swept the nation. Megi, known locally as Agaton, hit the archipelago on Sunday with winds of up to 65 kilometers per hour. Heavy rain and winds knocked out power supply, flooded homes and fields and caused mudslides in villages. It is the first such storm of the year. Nearly 140,000 people have been affected by the storm, with more than 13,000 fleeing to higher ground. Footage from the Philippine Coast Guard showed residents being evacuated from their homes. The National Disaster Agency says around 17,000 people are now staying at evacuation centres. The UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the Chancellor Rishi Sunak have both been fined by police for their role in parties in Downing Street over lockdown. It heaps yet more pressure on the Prime Minister, who had already been criticised for attending events that didn't abide by the rules the government itself had made. Police have issued at least 30 more fines for breaches of lockdown regulations at gatherings in Whitehall and Downing Street. This comes on top of the 20 fines sent out last month. The former Conservative French President Nicolas Sarkozy has endorsed Emmanuel Macron ahead of the second round in France's presidential election. Sarkozy had not backed any candidate, including the one from his own Les Républicains party, during the first round campaign. On social media, he said, I think he has the necessary experience as we face a deep international crisis. It comes the same day Macron met hospital workers in the eastern French city of Mulhouse in an attempt to win over working class voters. The second round of voting will take place on April the 24th. Meanwhile, his opponent, Marine Le Pen, has faced criticism after she said she didn't support oil and gas sanctions against Russia. In an interview with France Inter Radio, she said while she did broadly support sanctions, she didn't want French people to suffer the consequences of sanctions on oil and gas. The far-right politician has since been accused of being too close to Russia amid the war in Ukraine. Indonesia's parliament has passed a long-awaited bill to tackle sexual violence aimed at providing a legal framework for victims to secure justice. A majority of lawmakers backed the bill at the plenary session in parliament, overcoming opposition from some conservative groups in the world's biggest Muslim-majority country. Until now, sexual abuse had often been regarded as a private matter. The law comes after six years of deliberation on the topic. And North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has attended a ceremony for a major housing project in the capital city Pyongyang. In footage aired by state broadcaster KRT, Kim was seen cutting a ribbon to celebrate the completion of newly built buildings. North Korean media said the event was to mark the completion of 10,000 apartments and an 80-storey skyscraper. The event took place as the country marked 10 years since the younger Kim was elected as the top party and state leader.